At the beginning of the game, only a few cities are displayed on the chart. You can discover other cities by approaching them with a convoy. The city symbol itself gives an indication of the city's size. It also shows the commodity the city currently needs most. Special events in the city are also displayed on the chart. You can view all of the information by opening the city information. It belongs to the dockyard building, which you already know from the trade window. Even if you cannot enter a city because you have neither warehouse nor convoy there, you can still open the city information from the marine chart. The city information tells you everything you need to know about a city. The most important factors are nation, population, the commodities producible in the city, and the city type. The latter indicates whether the city is a simple colonial city or home to a governor or viceroy of that nation. This has implications for the city's size, its defense, and its demands for commodities. The reputation that you have with the city's nation has the following effect. If your reputation is less than 25%, the nation will view you as an enemy. That will happen, for example, if you attack their convoys. Then you should be wary of their military convoys. As you've already determined, four nations are represented in the Caribbean. Spain, England, France, and Holland. Your reputation with each of these four nations will always be shown here. Also shown here is the current relationship of the nations to one another. A nation can either be neutral to all other nations, at war with, or allied to another nation. Relationships between nations are not irrelevant for you. However, they will only play a role when you act for or against a nation and have acquired a letter of mark against a different nation from a viceroy. All that is important at the start is ensuring your reputation in a nation does not fall below 25% and that the military convoys of nations at war are constantly fighting one another. You can enhance your reputation in a nation only by accepting and fulfilling assignments for an administrator, governor or viceroy of that nation. These assignments are offered in the city palace, but you need a certain rank to accept them. One more thing about the chart. Each maritime area is associated with a particular power. You can turn the display of this political information on or off at any time. The flag and its intensity shows you which power has the greatest fighting strength here. Normally, cities and maritime regions belong to the same nation, as that nation's military convoys will be patrolling the area. Things become interesting when the city and the maritime region belong to different nations, because then the city might just come under attack. The construction of new factories and homes is always done through the architect's office. In a new city, you must first acquire the appropriate licenses from the architect before you can start construction. You already have the necessary licenses for Port Royal. To build a cotton plantation, switch to building construction and select the business. Here you can see which building materials are needed and how much the building materials, construction workers and the property will cost. The architect takes care of everything and purchases the building materials for the city. The charges vary according to current commodity prices in the city. If a city does not have enough building materials in stock, you will have to pay the maximum price for them and construction will not start until enough building materials are available. Once you confirm construction, you must then place the new building. Since the production of cotton requires both a main building and a field, the new business will require two adjacent open spaces and can then accommodate 25 workers. 
If you want to build another business of the same type, you can choose another space straight away. If you build a new one alongside an existing one, this adds a new field and expands the existing main house. The cost does not change, but it will allow you to save space. A plantation may consist of a main house and four cultivation areas and can accommodate up to 100 workers. You can proceed similarly with residential buildings. Here, however, each residential building requires its own construction site. On an average, each business requires one residential building per field. For example, a plantation with four fields requires four residential buildings for the workers and their families. Trade routes allow you to transport and trade goods automatically. To do so, you select a convoy and tell the captain which cities he is to visit. Then you have to specify a general trading strategy for the route. You can also give detailed instructions for each city. To set up a trade route, you must first select the cities your captain is to visit. To do this, you switch to your convoy's trade route section and select Setup. Then you select the cities one after another. Once the last city has been visited, the convoy returns to the first one on the route. Of course, your choice of cities plays an important role, as trade will be best between cities which produce different goods. Next, you have to decide on a strategy for the captain to follow. You can select a preset strategy, or you can specify just which goods the captain is to buy, sell, or transfer between warehouses and convoys for each city individually. At the start, you will find the preset strategies work well enough. Even in later stages of the game, they still work well, for your captain always adjusts his actions to suit current conditions. So you need not readjust the route when, for example, a city gets bigger, or if you have increased the production of goods. Once your business grows and you start producing goods in more and more cities, there is another helper you learn to appreciate. The storekeeper. You can hire him in the warehouse. In essence, he has two functions. Firstly, he can automatically sell goods in stock to the city at good prices. Second, he can also prevent certain goods from being taken for trade routes, which can be very important for badly needed raw materials. Trade routes and storekeepers together form two important pillars which will help you to build a powerful trading empire without having to worry about too many details.